I mean, just look at this. This must be terrible, right? Today we're in Bucharest. It's overflowing a bit. Look, there's a plastic bottle. This is a park that has a reputation of being really, really dirty. We can also look at the sidewalk. It's a bit hard in Bucharest to squeeze past all the cars. Welcome to a new episode of Keep It Clean. Today we're in Bucharest and we're gonna have a look at some parks, some green spaces, some pavements and the overall state of things when it comes to littering and flight of Let's see what we find. This in London would qualify as a really dense estate. Over here in Bucharest is just another street. Everything you see around me is either managed by the city hall or managed by people themselves. And uh, it's not looking too bad at all. Really, this is an unpretentious area of Bucharest. Generally, just looking around, you can see that it's really not worse than many of the residential areas around London. I'm literally on a random street behind some blocks of flats from socialist times and this is what you get. It's actually quite nice. There's no litter. So far so good. Let's move on to a local park. All right so I'm going into this park. It's a small park, very tidy and in a moment I'm gonna show you why and how. See that small shed box, whatever you like to call it? Permanent security is there at all times for this park. This park has permanent security. Anything wrong happens, you report it there. And there's another thing about this park. It has dedicated sweepers. So people who go around and clean the park all day, every day. And that's why you have parks that look like this. This is proof that investing in uh, keeping your parks clean actually works but you have to invest something just get a couple of people to look after them you know i keep going around this park just so you know that i'm not cherry picking the whole park is like this every single bench is clean i, I know this is on the long side you know just touring a park but i hope it paints a, a picture of what parks could be with proper maintenance you know this is just a socialist park I mean, you can see it. It's not the best looking park, but hell, it's clean. Right across this road, there's a supermarket. Well, there are multiple supermarkets. This one is Kaufland. We're gonna pay a visit to the area around the supermarket. We can also look at the, at the sidewalk and we can also look at the, the green spaces left and right of the sidewalk. Really, it's not that bad. It's not perfect, but it's not that bad. It's as good as it could be in an area that looks like this. All right, so we're in the parking lot of Kaufland. Let's have a walk of shame. Like any car park, you know, there's cigarette butts and uh, some wrappers, but that's the extent of it. It's generally quite clean. Let's analyze this area. I mean, nobody would care about this area, right? Right next to the curb. Look at it. It's dirty, but it's not terrible. Let's check these uh, shrubs. No litter. Let's try another one. Look, yeah. There are a couple of pieces of stuff here that's easily pickable at the end of the day. Anything in here? No, there isn't. The back of the store, I mean, this is always bad. Look, there's a couple of bottles here. Parking lot here, you'd expect this to be a complete disaster but it's not. The area around supermarkets can be clean, but only if supermarkets actually do something about it. Look, there's a bottle, shocking. I'm gonna report it. The area right next to the trolley station, it's clean. Asda would have a heart attack knowing that a trolley station can actually be clean. It's a level of involvement from large companies that is completely and utterly lacking in London. Seeing a parking lot this clean in Wembley where I lived, would have been unthinkable. The graffiti is the worst thing that can happen around here. Apart from that, it's just clean. 
and here we are not 50 meters from that shopping center let's just jump over here see how much rubbish we find well, the answer is we don't find and here we are in another park there are a few pieces of litter here and there some works going on Oh, I found a bottle. Let's just do a public service and put it in the bin. Let's go to the market, shall we? Just look at this this must be terrible right it just looks so bad what we find is a random piece of litter here and there if you've never seen a socialist neighborhood before this is pretty much how they all look like regardless of the country they were built in after the soviet model you know it's just it's not great it's not terrible 3.6 but one thing they're not dirty look I mean, i'm gonna do the last one look at that This is the dirtiest patch I could find in the area. It has a lot of um, polystyrene, probably from when these buildings were built. The wind blew them here. So this patch of grass definitely needs some litter picking. But the park itself looks reasonably clean. If there's a rubbish bin station. Let's see that, shall we? It's pretty much contained within this area overflowing a bit but the rest of the street is all right and again these gardens that people care about because that's that's all you get you know there are like a hundred apartments here and the last thing you want is some dirty area around your tiny matchbox in which you live you would not expect an area that looks this bad at first sight to be this clean it's really not not too bad not too bad bench bin and another. There's another bench. There's another bin. Who would have thought bins work? Oh my God, people actually use them. No litter next to the curb. No litter behind the fence. There's a bottle. Look, there's a plastic bottle, but it's actually used as a greenhouse for a small plant. Same with these ones. This is not litter, it's just mini tiny greenhouses. We are here in the Union Square. This is a park that has a reputation of being really, really dirty. The last time I was here, a few years ago, it was extremely dirty. So I'm expecting the same thing. Unfortunately, or fortunately actually, it doesn't seem to be the case. Again, it's not really well maintained, but it's not too dirty so far. We'll carry on and see what else we find. I keep walking and Still, there's no trace of rubbish, which honestly is surprising. Things are really old and no investment has been made in this area. In spite of all of this, it's clean. Yeah, th this is definitely the biggest surprise that I've had so far in the first. Not a trace of rubbish. So I don't know, something changed over the past couple of years. There are new benches here, so slowly but surely, I hope, they're gonna replace all of them. And that should hopefully bring this park to a European standard. 
there might be some more stuff under these dead leaves uh, I see another bottle over here and a couple of uh, what are these plastic gloves but all in all this is not looking bad genuinely surprised about the state of this park See, Bucharest can oftentimes be a paradoxical city. You can have horribly looking infrastructure, like you can see around me, but on the other hand, even on this decrepit urban stage, littering generally seems to be under control, which is mildly unexpected. One bin, another bin, and then another, and then another and another and so on and so forth bins work maybe we should have more of them it's a bit hard in Bucharest to squeeze past all the cars when you're just strolling down the pavement well, this BMW won't let me pass. I have to take the shortcut on the street. At this point, I think it's safe to assume that this is just what you're gonna get in Bucharest. A general neglect for infrastructure, but relatively clean nevertheless. There it is, we've reached the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I filmed the street level investigation during my very short stay in Bucharest, so it was only meant to give you a rough idea on what this Eastern European capital is like outside of touristy areas. In doing so, I tried to look at the same type of streets, alleys, shops, and green spaces that I would normally critique and also clean up in Northwest London where I live. And I think you'll agree with me that infrastructure aside, Bucharest was a genuine surprise and compares favorably to many areas in London, some of which, in spite of vastly superior infrastructure, facilities and resources, at least on paper, are otherwise drowning in litter, which is such a shame. But that's another story for another time. Before going back to London, in part two of this Romanian special, we will visit the northeastern city of Yash, Romania's second largest city, and who knows, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised again. Or maybe not, that remains to be seen, so hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.